Welcome, Nick, to Metalidium Pages. It's a great pleasure to talk with you about Joe for a Cowboy, this returning album, One Healer, after 10 years of, of the, the last album, Sun Either, and, and obviously more, more things related to the metal world. So we are starting by asking a common question. So how has the band been during the last 10 years, and why the band delayed 10 years to release this new album? Sure. Uh, well, you know, we kind of came up with this concept of like we wanted to, uh, it to be a, a sister record um, to Sun Eater. So we knew we had that like impetus from the beginning that we were going to create like a um, a sun and a moon, you know, and just to kind of have that yin yang essence vibe completed. And so we really thought that, you know, we were like, well, should you do it at four years? No, it's not really a good number. Six not really good 10 really was just the most round like perfect number we figured like yeah you do it 10 years later so everybody's like okay cool so johnny decided to go to uh school and um he became a coder graduated had uh, a couple kids uh, got married and all that stuff and then tony decided to become a doctor and so he went to ireland uh, med school in ireland and then al decided he watched the show uh orange is the new black and he got like really I don't know, I guess just inspired by those guards. And so uh, he became a, uh, a CO at uh, a correctional facility. And uh, yeah, and then I stayed busy with other bands. You know, I kept doing uh, Cephala Carnage. Um, I joined Havoc. And um, then uh, I helped uh, write Ghost Write for this band, Nuclear Power Trio. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so just, you know, kind of everybody just kind of did their thing. Charn now is you know not in the band but we're trying to get him to play with us again but uh he left and joined a billion different bands so it was just like you know kind of one of those forks in the road where everybody wanted to um i guess do different things uh, i mean we all kind of would have you know liked to keep the thing going but johnny really did have a couple um kids that he wanted to just not miss any of that you know very important stuff the first step the first word so they just just to really be there and raise them first and so after like okay cool now they're now they're raised um now he's like okay you know i wanted wanted to get into making music again you know uh because he was tired of working at the chocolate factory so mm, okay the nice, chocolate nice. Factory. <laughs> <laughs> okay nice so you mentioned a few things a few things a few seconds ago is that this moon healer is a continuation from some either Oh no, curiously the, the bold war the bold albums end in either healer. So perhaps that's right. like a curious team. So sure. so yep. um, and can we say that this sun when well, this moon healer is uh is like one well, is is like a second part of the sun either and perhaps we expect in a trilogy for this concept? P potentially, yeah. So we I've been talking about that actually uh, with some other some other uh, folks that we were you know doing some press with. And um I'm not sure if, if we would want to keep keep the concept going uh, because you can kind of we left it open. You know, Johnny's a very um, opaque in his writing, so it, you can't quite exactly know what happens to the character. A lot of it's up to interpretation. So the character could very well be dead um, at the end of this record. So, um, but because we kind of thought something similar at the, at the last record, you, it could be carried on. Um, we just don't know. I guess it'll have to be. Something we decide before we go actually writing new stuff, though, if, if it's going to be a continuation. I will say, like, the direction musically that the band is going, that will definitely continue, you know? Um, it's just whether or not we tie in the concept again from um, this character, from Sunny Dream, Moon Healer. I mean, the person that it's based off of has a, a really amazing, crazy life trajectory, so they could continue to, like, write, you know, by living their crazy life. They could continue to, to write new things that we could end up uh, writing about. So, so I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. All right. <clears throat> for remember when I hear for the first time Joe for a cowboy, and the album that I love, uh, the, the, one of the first albums that I love is Renation. Great album, by the way, at that time, 2009. So then the band in Democracy, the seat continue this the side continue with that that sound with deathcore sound in Democracy, but then. When you release Sun Either, the band changed completely the sound. It's not anymore the chords, not anymore the chords, more like the progressive, technical, dead metal band. Not anymore death chord. So who, uh, this change at that time, 2014, was 
a conscious decision, or perhaps it's because you are get better and better, and the music the music was more progressive. Probably a little a little bit of both. Um, I mean, I don't remember specifically like when I joined the band, uh, it was it was made pretty clear that um, it wasn't going to be deathcore. You know that uh, like that kind of MySpace EP days of the band were. Um, that sound it was kind of past. They didn't want to really have anything to do with breakdowns, um, bass drops, breeze, the pig squeals, all the kind of things they got they got famous for. Um, it just grew as musicians, you know, really fast. And I think like me coming into the band, Tony coming into the band, um, in addition to Al, because Al was there for Runation and, and was a big part of the, that sound. Um, but the three, but the three of us together musically. Uh, just decided to kind of um, just do something different, you know what I mean? Something we wanted to write, and uh, it just ended up being a really fun direction for us. You know, it's like room. I don't know. It's 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 a weird growth thing, where I guess as you as you progress on your instrument, you want to obviously kind of showcase that. But there's also some maturity that comes along from getting better on your instruments too, um, and just getting better as a player is that like, you know, we kind of like make room for each other to talk. So maybe that kind of plays into the part of like you know having kind of um an arpeggiated chord part you know mm -hmm. where it hangs out at the end and those little extra hangs give me give me a little room or danny on that record or naveen in the new record gives us a little room to do little fills and stuff and just like so we're kind of constantly um having a conversation but letting each other speak mm, interesting to know all the detail uh, but then one thing that you mentioned it is that usually when you record your first album or perhaps uh, perhaps you record the first EP in, in this case Doom in in 2005 at that time well, let's talk with the Genesis much better when you record your first album or when the band record the first album usually at that time you are not a good musician you are you this is your first album recording a new album so it's normal that other time you have some some mistakes, some mistakes because this is you did that is your first album. It was your first album, but as you mentioned it, when you are continue practicing, practicing rehearsal, uh, playing live shows more, 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 and create more, more, and what you have you receive a lot of experience with the instrument and obviously on the studio, but. Um, at the same time, one of the one of the details that always I always see on the fans is that the fans always attach to the to the previous records, or perhaps for the first records. Uh, perhaps they prefer the rawness, they prefer the mistakings on that record because they think that this is more organically. But when you, as, as you mentioned, you grow as a musician now. You have a new album, up, you know, you know, you know, album upcoming. So now you are met much, much better position than the first album. So, and related to this, why do you? So, why? What's your opinion about this aspect that the fans says that the the band, the one, the fans don't understand that you grow as a musician. The fans just love the music. So, right. what is your what what is your opinion about the fans? You are stick with the rawness or with the mistakes that you that you have sure. in your first albums and no oh, no. Yeah. No, I didn't just not understand that what happened now. Sure. Yeah, I get it. I mean, sometimes, you know, my favorite artists have grown and sometimes where they've grown to, uh, I'm not I'm I don't follow them along on that journey, you know? Uh that's okay. You know, it's a, everything's like open for uh you to love or to to you know, kind of like or to not like at all, you know? And I mean, it really is a different band than that. Like you go back to that Doom EP, I mean, it's completely, I mean, Johnny's voice is the only thing that's the same. It literally is an entirely new band. And so, uh, and a different time in the world, you know what I mean? That was 20, 20 fucking years ago. So, um, you know, there's bands that'll kind of keep continue to put out the same thing again and again, you know, like we could have just released Doom like six different times seven different times and just kind of lightly change little parts of it um and probably been wildly successful probably making a lot more uh we'd probably all have been i don't know who knows maybe making retirement money or at least rolling around in a, a helicopter or something <laughs> but you know you you want to grow you want to make something that you want to make that can that's going to fulfill you and so that's kind of what we did so i mean i still i can see the spotify numbers and uh, Apple Muses and all that stuff when we look it up. And, and those, the Doom EP is still, I mean, Entombment of a Machine and Knee Deep are always at the top. I mean, by like four or five times the, any other songs that we've written. 
but uh you know hopefully some of the stuff from moon healer will catch up there maybe we find a new um in addition to the fans that do come with us maybe we find some new uh all new fans um that uh will, will knock those guys out of the top of the charts for us okay okay well when you decide to well, when you decide to that release an either at that time there was the last years that the music is spread just by uh, just not full albums now 10 years passed from that album as you can see now the people are returning or returning back on time to listen just singles yeah, yeah the people yeah with the playlist with the allow for the digital platforms spotify title yeah. youtube etc cetera, etc cetera. so now so in this case for you which song from this moon healer is the best the best song to understand whole concept from this album Oof, you know i probably would have to say uh i'd have to say the last one um only because it's i mean a it's my fa it's my personal favorite on the record um i think it's really representative of i guess like the entire journey um there are fast parts in it there's techie parts in it there's proggy parts in it um but overall it like kind of is the culmination of the whole record i feel like the record is taking you on this big long journey to the last song and the last song is kind of like the the crown i guess i would say so i, I would say that the forever rot would be the one that i would that i would jam if i could only jam one song up mm, okay okay all the detail interesting about the job for a cowboy if, well, you are returning with the big label with Metal Blade because the previous one was also with Metal Blade. Now, so how yep. was your one? Now, until now, how was it? How is your communication with Metal Blade? Uh, perhaps you will still see that label as a friend, or perhaps with the name on it, a job for a guy. Well, just it's more like a business, no comrade, this kind of stuff. Oh yeah, no, we're definitely friends. Yeah, we talk all the time. Like, I mean, it's it's pretty much every day that we talk so and then even you know sometimes like i went out for nam uh the, the music north american uh or whatever it is the 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 music merchants the big uh meetup the big convention center where everybody goes and, and parties and ass kisses <laughs> but um we, so i went out there and, and uh, we went to like the metal legions night and and the metal blade folks were there and you know they bought me drinks and we just kind of partied and had a good time i mean some of the guys uh from the label um like uh, Vince and, and especially like Ryan Williams, um, whom I, I started touring with way back when he was in Black Dahlia Murder and I was in Fall of Carnage, one of my first tours ever in like 2006. So our friendships are very, very old and um, and they just, it, it's a very like family type of a vibe there. I think that's it's, it's one of the biggest draws of being on Metal Blade is like despite them being a, a you know, a bigger extreme metal label, um, it, it feels like a family, you know, like people are, um it's it's yes it's business but and there's that line that's always there sometimes you have to have those conversations but in general it's very pleasant dealing with them because because they're friends you know mm -hmm. okay oh well, talking about now for your previous album now sun either i remember when sun either came up uh in 2014 and this album has uh, uh, had uh, appeared appeared in a lot of mm, top lists of the year. I remember that there's wow. the album of the year, technical, the band changed completely the sound. A lot of things. You are a part of the band at that time right now also. So, and I remember that it, that this that album was, and even I remember that album was re-released or reissued more than 20 times for a lot of labels around the world. So for, mm -hmm. when, and with this aspect, uh, you don't feel a bit of pressure about this new album moon healer because oh, yeah. sanither was an, an album that i that i saw mentioning in many year end of list oh yeah yeah that was the only thing that was the interesting thing is that we didn't have any um time pressure that you normally have as a band you know like oh the, 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 to do this day so that was really kind of interesting because we were able to keep making revisions as much as we wanted to essentially there eventually was pressure at the end time pressure at the end uh the very very end but for seven or eight years there was no no pressure at all um so you'd think that that was um you know uh oh okay you're gonna not have that sort of pressure but there was there was the pressure of putting out something as good as sun eater 
know, like we definitely felt that like it just for internally being like, oh, man, is this as good? You know, is this is this going to, you know, because we, we don't want to just make it as good either. We were trying to step it up, you know, and just be like, how can we take what we did on Sunday Eater and push it, you know, in all directions? Um, and so, I, you know, I think we accomplished that. But that was funny that 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 was there. You know, it was definitely noticeable. Like, oh, man, are people going to it? It almost felt like our second record in a way. Because mm. everything was changed on Sunny Deer, yeah. you know, this feels like our second record to me, which yeah. is kind of fun. But yeah, so that that is true. This new album for me too is represent like because when I, as I mentioned it, when I hear for the Genesis Renation of the Monocracy, uh, the Monocracy at that time, you are totally more in more lean down to the deathcore. But with Sun Eater, you present a different kind of monsters, not like the first three albums. So right. now I yeah. I'm agree with you. This yeah. Moon Healer for me is an also a second record, a second record. since <laughs> the last six, <laughs> ten years ago. That's cool, man. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. So now talking about the promotion of this new Moon Healer. Oh, well, I know. I know you. I know that Ivan is very very well now around the world. So perhaps, but but, but you perhaps will embark on tours on europe asia us or perhaps you will come to to latin america on a full tour who knows what are our plans do you have for this moon healer uh we would love to get down to latin america i've never been down to latin america with mm -hmm. um job for cow but i think it'd be have i ever been down there with job no i don't think so we played mexico uh but never um but we never got to south america we never got to central america um and that would just be great because i have been down there with havoc and it's just wild like one of my favorite places to play it's just the and i mean like it's the traveling is very uh tiring uh it's very daunting the schedule because you have to fly pretty much every day and very few days off and so you don't get a lot of time in each city and you don't get a lot of time at the hotels to sleep but the but the energy of the shows completely charges you up uh, because it's just wild so that's great and then you know always love going over to europe we always love uh i love japan we always do really well in japan uh, with job that's great australia um states canada you know so it's just going to be kind of figuring out basically the schedule that we have with these guys because um they all you know still are doctors and have you know i do it coding for big companies and have kids and and all this stuff so to go out and do six to eight months a year type of touring like we used to do, I, I don't really foresee that happening, but we want to try to eventually get to play this stuff for everybody, you know, to sort of hear this new job for a cowboy, you know, like we've not really gotten to play this. We've only played two shows since Sun Eater came out, one in 2016 and one this year or one last year in August. So, so it's like, I would love to showcase this music for people, you know? Mm, okay. Nice. Well, that that will be interesting if you came to if you will come to here to Latin America. <laughs> Hell yeah! Where yeah. are you at? What? Uh, what uh, well, I'm 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 in Peru, but the, the media oh, is from nice. Peru. Is from Peru, Colombia, and Mexico. Okay, cool. Never been to uh, Peru. My step uh, stepmother was from uh, Peru. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, and uh, we were always going to go to uh, obviously Lima or something, you know, get some ceviche, but. So ended up not working out. <laughs> but the, yeah, I've heard that heard the food in uh, Lima is incredible. The food in, in Peru, in general, in Peru, in, in Peru, in general, in, yes, yes, that's <laughs> yes. Now returning to the to the top to the job for a couple. I remember when sure. I he, well, also here's very different the things when in Latin America is here different the things. So when I hear for the first time your for a couple, one of the biggest questions for me. Is who came with the idea to put a band job for a cowboy? Well, and in Spanish is, yeah. is the translation to the Spanish is be, it's it's funny in some ways, funny, funny. What's, and what's even, this and, translation? Is is well, in Spanish is trabajo para un vaquero. Trabaja para un vaquero. Trabajo para un vaquero. <laughs> trabajo para un vaquero. I, I exactly. Like, I think I like that better. I think I like that better. <laughs> and so change, perhaps... I think we changed the name. <laughs> you know, it was just okay. a goof, dude. I don't even remember. I don't. They don't even remember because you know I, I joined the band in 2011, and mm -hmm. they at talking to them about the name. I remember asking that, and they don't remember how they came up with it. Somebody <laughs> must have just said it drunk, drunk or something, or high or whatever. And they were like, "Yeah, we well, should call the band that." And then like it ended up sticking, and now they're stuck with it. And I'll tell you what, it's one of those things because it's like, um, it is a stupid name. But it definitely is a name that you don't forget, you know, like yes. it sticks in your head. You're gonna be like, oh, what the fuck? 
they're a metal band job for a cowboy what but you remember it it's always stuck in there so i guess in that aspect it does its job you know we 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 just call it jfac you know j j f a c and that's kind of just kind of stuck with us and we uh even though like in the scene a lot of people will do that although we haven't quite transferred that to merch yet maybe we need to do that just redo the logo j f a c and just kind of mm-hmm. roll with that <laughs> and cowboy hats and we're all going to get cowboy hats <laughs> great so other than that, yeah, talking about talking about other kind of aspects, one thing that I want to ask you is because you are there yeah, at the beginning of the interview, you mentioned me that you are playing with Cephalic Carnage. One yeah. of the for me, one of the biggest bands on the grind core scene worldwide. Yeah, thank you. One of the biggest ones. I really love all the all the all their albums. And this in this case, well, talking about now for a little deal from Cephalic Carnage, which which are the which are the future for Cephalic Carnage? Because I'm expected an album for more than know, 10 years. 14 years. It's been longer yeah. than job. <laughs> yes. Now we'll be doing the same type of interview when we drop the new Cephalic, which is going to be like, what did you guys do for 15 years? Um, you know, it's funny because like right after we put that last record out with Cephalic, um, weed became legal in Colorado. So like that was kind of the band's mission was to get weed made legal. So since it, it we, we did it, you know, we didn't have anything else to write about. But realistically, though, um, there's a lot of music, like so much music. Um, my guitarist, Brian um, from Cephalic, he's also my going to be my brother-in-law. He's marrying my sister. And mm-hmm. uh, on his computer alone, I think he's got six or seven tracks. And then Steve at his house, uh, Brian and Steve live together. There's over an hour and a half of, of guitar music that's worked out together and probably three or four songs that are actually um, – like written out we even have drums demoed from uh either patrice or mary man or even danny walker so it's one of those things where it's like i think we just need to put the date on it we just need to put the pressure on for that band i think that's kind of like with job we were able to get that going and get the song flow happening with each other even though we're you know millions of miles away from each other with cephalic carnage we all live besides the drummer we all live in denver and it's like just to get it going i think we've got to literally like book some studio time with otero you know or like tell have the label be like all right it's got to come out this time or never you know so we need a little you know pressure uh to get that diamond going but the music that's there is really cool it's a range of stuff from like you know like some of it sounds like exploiting dysfunction some of it sounds like lucid interval it's got a big range of stuff like the things that make cephalic cephalic like we make sure that they're there and there's a lot to choose from so um hopefully we end up doing that man it would be cool if i would say that that thing could come out in 2025 <laughs> i'm gonna go, okay. I'm gonna go out on a limb and see if we can maybe get it done that's a nice year to release a record sounds good <laughs> 20, 2025 okay, okay. flow to it <laughs> okay one thing that you mentioned is now the one thing that you mentioned is that when uh, cephalic cephalic carnage talks about about the weed, about this kind of aspect. So, uh, in related to the the music industry or the metal in general since the seventies, with Iron Maiden, once write lyrics about to some someone piece up. Right, that's that that's the way to hear metal. The metal is against at that time since the beginning it's against something, against politics, against religion, against society, sure. a, lot, a lot of stuff. But as you can as you mentioned as you mentioned before, now the weed is well accepted. Now the weed right. is normally on the people. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Right. And also now the anti-religious people, the satanic, the satanic people. Uh, I remember the nineties. The satanic people at that time were, were were satanic because we are against the Christianity. Blah 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 blah. And the, but now, uh, now the black metal is well more accepted. As you can see, uh, as you can see on YouTube, by channels to de- to dedicate to create content in black metal. To sure, how how do you? Black metal. Yeah, you know? Christian black metal, yeah. etc. Now the metal, the metal in, in general is well more accepted than the seventies, eighties, nineties. So no. Right. So what's your opinion about now about the metal lyrics uh, at that time was against something, but now the metal sure. no 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 not have to do well. The metal's not no. The metal doesn't have this kind of essence now because I think sure. the metal there's nothing, there's nothing to rebel against. <laughs> yes. You know? Uh, I mean, I think it, like, that's what will in- interesting to see, but that that's kind of like it's really more like rage alongside the machine now. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. it seems like everything is like they have like, the the way that uh, things where people were complaining about now, like are I guess 
incongruent with how things are, you know? And so I guess there'll always be the opposite side then will come out, I think, and eventually make its way. You know, everything's a pendulum and swings back and forth like this. So, um, But it is, you know, kind of funny. It's like there's still bad shit in the world, you know, and metal kind of always took the reins to speak out about evils. Um, and I think that there's still a lot of evil in the world, so there's still a lot of things to, to write about and to be pissed about. Um, maybe more than ever, actually, if you really dig into it. So I think it's just like bubbling under the surface right now. Maybe the records are just getting written right now, you know? Um, I also like, you know, records that don't exactly get, you know, they kind of like like the, J, the JFAC stuff. We went a totally different direction than, you know, p any kind of political or, you know, writing about the real evils of the world, which, you know, JFAC definitely tackled in the past. This one was a lot more like just conceptually based off of telling a different story. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's really cool and creative too, because there's a lot more to write about in, in the world of um, fiction, I guess, if you were to think about it that way, or, you know, fiction that's based off of real life stuff, um, concepts, you know, there's a lot of just, there's a lot of information out there and knowledge out there and things that are interesting that we could base stuff off of without writing the same records over and over again. You know, it's like, it gets old right like you know church bad okay get it write something else man you know it's like you need come up with a second song <laughs> so but that's a good point man okay okay well nick the sad times arrive at this interview i hope you enjoyed this one like me oh a lot great for a course since the beginning obviously you all are ran cephalic for me is one of the biggest bands into the grindcore Really, Thank really you. love the Brussels. We hope to see you down there too. We we'll hope to see yeah. go bring yeah. Spolic down there. Uh, congratulations, Spolic the... together. <laughs> oh, yeah, amazing that! <laughs> congratulations <laughs> on this new Moon Healer Records. It's a great one. Thank you. It's a great one. And perhaps do you want to add something to your Latin American fans and obviously Metalidium followers? Oh, for sure. Gracias por todo. We thank you guys so much, man. We love it down there. Seriously, can't wait to get down there. But until we do. Um, you know, pick up Moon Healer, jam it, learn those tracks, and uh, just thank you for your support. It means a lot to come back after so long and uh, have everybody care still. So 